Dear students, I am Santa, working as a physics faculty in Target English Medium School. In the chapter of heat, today in this part video, I would like to explain about what is the boiling and what is the boiling point of water. How we can find boiling point of water experimentally and further what is the latent heat of vaporization this type of concept mostly i covered in this video okay let me come to our topic directly what is the boiling so boiling is nothing but the process of the process of a liquid phase substance the process of a liquid phase substance converts or changes into the vapor phase into the vapor or gaseous phase this process we are called boiling listen very carefully boiling is nothing but the process of a liquid phase substance converts or changes into the vapor okay vapor or gaseous phase that process we are called which one boiling okay so boiling is is a bulk phenomenon so listen very carefully it is very very important for okay come to examination side boiling is a which type of phenomena it is a bulk bulk is nothing but huge or large okay but how boiling is a bulk phenomena that is i have explained with help of the a suitable experiment in the topic of how to find boiling point of water so in the previous video in the same chapter heat under the evaporation concept i says that evaporation is a which type of phenomena surface phenomena but boiling is a which phenomena bulk phenomena because of evaporation is occurs only for the surface of the liquid that's why that is a okay which phenomena surface phenomena but boiling is not only occurs at the surface it is occurs entire the liquid means total that's why it is a huge or bulk phenomena that is the meaning of that one okay so but here one more thing is there a boiling occurs at a particular temperature only so this is also very important point boiling occurs at a particular temperature only preservative evaporation when compared to evaporation evaporation is occurs at any temperature below the boiling point that is we know that clearly okay but boiling is occurs okay at any temperature no boiling is occurs only at a particular temperature only it is also correct or not with help of the okay that experiment we you are easily understand this topic also now come to that one okay before going to the experiment what is the boiling point or boiling point of water simply boiling point we can write as a b dot p b p simply what is the boiling point means okay the temperature at 
which the temperature at which the entire liquid phase the entire liquid phase completely changes or converts into vapor phase listen me carefully at constant temperature or the temperature okay this one you can define in the two ways at constant temperature or the temperature at which the entire liquid phase change completely changes into the vapor phase or at constant temperature okay the liquid phase of substance is completely changes into the vapor phase that is also we are called boiling point the boiling point of water is 100 degrees celsius that is equals to 212 degree fahrenheit that is equals to 373 kelvin okay listen very carefully what is the boiling point of water the scientists are find out experimentally that is also now we discussed it okay after this concept the boiling point of water is 100 degree celsius in celsius thermometer and 212 degree fahrenheit in fahrenheit thermometer and 373 kelvin in kelvin scale so next our topic is how to find boiling point of water experimentally that's why okay first i will draw a diagram after the diagram what are the materials are required to conduct this experiment and what is the procedure and what is the conclusion you are observing finally in this experiment that is step by step we discuss it in this time
so it is a okay rough diagram to connect our experiment so we know that very clearly if we can find if sorry if we can do any experiment we must be want some materials or apparatus okay what are the materials are required to us to conduct boiling point of water experimentally means with help of this diagram we can say very easily okay first one is round bottom class white glass tripoid bunsen burner water thermometer delivery tube to hold rubber cart and a retard stand listen very carefully round bottom a large round bottom class white glass tripoid bunsen burner water thermometer delivery tube and two hold rubber cart and finally a retard stand okay what is the use of the retard stand with help of the retard stand we can keep the round bottom flask okay freely on the white glass or tripoid okay so these are the materials are required to us to conduct this experiment which experiment boiling point of water how to find boiling point of water okay what is the let's proceed to us means let me come to the point directly so how we can find boiling point of water experimentally with help of this apparatus or this okay by using this with help of this diagram means let me come to the point first of all we can take some quantity of pure water in a round bottom plus now the bottom flask is placed over a wire glass and further it is kept on the tripoid now the round bottom flask is keep in the a okay with help of the retard stand in vertical mode like as shown in the figure after that the open mouth of the round bottom flask is closed with two hold rubber cart to find holes rubber cart means a rubber cart is means this open and is closed with rubber cart but it has the two opening bores or vessels in there okay so through one bore or one hole we place a thermometer which thermometer laboratory thermometer and already in the previous concept i said that in the concept of how to find melting point of water in that concept which thermometer we are using laboratory thermometer what is the range of laboratory thermometer minus 10 degrees celsius to 110 degree celsius that's why minus 10 degrees celsius to 110 degree celsius of laboratory thermometer we place into the okay round bottom flask through the single hole but here the mercury bulb in the thermometer it must be okay 5 cm above the surface of the water and through the another hole okay we place a delivery tube the delivery tube will be having one opening and closed valve is there okay so this is the brief idea about the plan what you can do here listen very carefully okay so first of all we can take sorry first of all we can take a round bottom glass and fill with some quant certain quantity of pure water now the bottom now the glass is placed on the wire glass and further it is kept over on a tripoid next this round bottom glass we can keep in vertical mode with help of the retard stand next the open mouth of open end of the round bottom flask is closed with two hold rubber cart okay a thermometer a laboratory thermometer is placed or keep in the first hold and a delivery tube 
with the opening wall we skip into the second hole into the round bottom plastic okay so after that what we can do next after that now the okay, water in the okay plastic is gently heated with help of the bunsen burner okay and observe the thermometer reading carefully when the th the temperature in the thermometer is reaches to 100 degrees celsius okay the thermometer reading is reaches to 100 degrees celsius at that time we are observing okay the water will be starts the boiling the water will be starts the boiling here okay one small concept i was missed one another okay that is the okay pumice stones okay what is that one pumice stones what are the pumice stones is nothing but a small okay means one size of the pebbles or stones they are called what is that one pumice stones what is the use of the pumice stones in the boiling point of water means okay the stones we can keep at the bottom of the okay round bottom plastic during the boiling what will be happen we are observing that the water will be okay in the form of vapors it will be spilled out okay so that's why by adding the stones it will be created the large volume inside the water molecules that's why it will be avoid the exploding of which one round water flask by increasing the pressure that's why the pumice stones are using okay in the round water flask in the experiment of which one boiling point of water experimentally let me come to the point step by step okay so what are the operators are required to us one second listen very carefully round bottom plus wire gas tripod bunsen burner thermometer delivery tube to hold rubber cart a retard stand these are the metals are required and pumice stones okay next what are the procedure we can follow to find boiling point of water is 100 degrees celsius means first point what is the first one means first of all we can take an empty dry round bottom flask and fill it with certain amount of pure water now that is the first point and the second point now the beaker now the okay flask is placed on the wire gas further it is kept over a tripod okay tripod that is the second point the third one is the open end of the round bottom flask is closed with two hold rubber cart and okay through the first one hole we kept a laboratory thermometer its range is minus 10 degree celsius to 110 degree celsius and through the another hole we place the a, okay delivery tube it contain a okay valve it is used for opening or close purpose is there now finally the entire the okay bottom we can keep in vertical mode with help of the retard stand that is the third one and the fourth one is what is that one now the water in the okay plastic is gently heated with help of the bunsen burner when the water is gently heated with help of the bunsen burner at that time we carefully observe in the okay temperature reading in the thermometer when the Okay, the temperature reading in the thermometer is reaches to 100 degrees Celsius. At that time, we are observing the inside the okay flask, the water will be converted into the vapor or gas state. Next one is there. And okay, if we can without stopping the heat energy to supply the flask, we can continuously supply the heat energy up to the entire the water will be completely converted into the vapor phase that's why at that time here listen very carefully what is the use of the delivery tube here means okay when okay the water will be converted into the vapor phase the vapor phase or gases phase of the steam okay is not okay it will be keep inside the bottom what will inside the plus what will happen it is create a large pressure then finally it will be explode that's why to reduce the pressure and maintain standard atmospheric pressure what we can do so we can open the valve in the delivery tube when you can open the valve in the delivery tube the excess okay 
pressure will become outside and again immediately we can close the wall that is the use of the delivery tube here okay so that's why right. so continuously with help of the delivery tube we can maintain the standard atmospheric temperature and we can continuously observe in that first of all okay so here one thing is there the initial temperature of the boiling point of water is t1 degree celsius that is from the okay experiment we can say that we are observing the 100 degree celsius okay now we can continuously heat continuously heated the water up to the entire the liquid in the flask is completely converted into the vapor phase okay when the entire the liquid in the flask is completely converted to the vapor phase at that time you observe the temperature in the tube that is t2 degree celsius at that time also it is showing 100 degree celsius that's why t1 degree celsius is equals to t2 degree celsius that is equals to 100 degree celsius means T1 degree Celsius is represented initial temperature of the boiling and T2 degree Celsius is represented the final temperature of the boiling at the end of the process. It is the starting of the process, it is the end of the process. But T1 and T2, what is the value? 100 degree Celsius means in this one, temperature changes? No. Even, even though we supply the heat energy continuously to the beaker, but the temperature reading is not increases here. Okay, already this type of concept we discussed in the melting process, like the same method also we discussed here. Okay, so for example, okay, if we can take one gram of water, if we can take one gram of water at 100 degree Celsius, is completely converted into the one gram of steam, means is nothing but water vapor at 100 degree Celsius. Okay, for this one only nearly 540 calories per gram or okay, 2288 okay, nearly that much sorry, 2268 joules of heat energy will be required. Okay, that is our maximum level. Listen very carefully. Means here, okay, from starting of the boiling process to ending of the boiling process, okay, up to certain time we are continuously heated the Okay, plus or water with help of the Bunsen burner, but the temperature is not rises or changes in the thermometer. It is showing 100 degrees Celsius only up to entire the liquid is converted to that one. But what about the, the excess heat energy will be goes to where? Or what about that excess heat energy given to the water? How it is utilized? That is also we discussed in this time. Okay, before going to that, one second I will explain this concept. Listen very carefully. So to conduct these experiments, we want some materials. What are the materials are required to us means a round bottom flask, a large round bottom flask, wire glass, tripod, Bunsen burner, two hold rubber car, a thermometer, delivery tube, a retard stand, and water. Okay, so what is the first one? Okay, means first of all we can take a round bottom flask and fill it with okay, pure water. Now the bottom flask is placed over a wire glass and further it is kept on the tripod. Now the round bottom flask keep in vertical mode okay, with help of the retard stand as shown in the figure. The open end of open mouth or open end of the round bottom flask is closed with two hole rubber pack. Through one hole, we kept a laboratory thermometer. Its range is minus 10 degrees Celsius to 100, 110 degrees Celsius. And through the another second hole, we keep the delivery tube. It is containing an open wall. Sorry, containing a wall. Now, okay. The water in the round bottom flask is gently or gradually heated with help of the Bunsen burner. At that time, we carefully observe, in the, observe the reading in the thermometer. When the temperature reading in the thermometer is reaches to 100 degrees Celsius, we are observing inside the bottom flask, the water will be converted into the vapor. That's why we can note at that temperature, that is T1 degree Celsius. T1 degree Celsius is represented the 
initial temperature of the boiling or it is the starting temperature of the boiling process and next we can without stopping the heat energy we can continuously supply the heat energy up to the entire the liquid in the okay round bottom glass is completely converted into the vapor phase so after completely converted to the vapor phase again we are observing the temperature it is also showing it is the temperature is t2 degree celsius but in this experiment we are observing that the initial temperature of the boiling process and the final temperature of the boiling process both are same that is 100 degree celsius but between the t1 degree celsius to t2 degree celsius up to certain time we continuously supply the heat energy to the water from the bunsen burner okay but where has go that heat energy okay means that heat energy will be utilized for other purpose that is we can discuss in the concept of latent heat of vaporization i clearly explained to that now here what we can conclude finally that's why okay the boiling point of water is 100 degrees celsius how we can say once you are observing that okay what is the boiling point okay at what temperature the entire the liquid phase is converted into the vapor or gases phase that temperature we are called boiling point here is also at 100 degrees celsius the entire the liquid is completely converted into the vapor phase that's why 100 degrees celsius is boiling point of water here i will be saying okay here what is the use of the wall means okay initially the water will be converted to the vapor phase at that time okay if vapor we can keep inside the okay flask what will be happen it will be created high pressure that's why okay maybe the okay flask may be explode that's why to avoid the exploding of flask and to maintain standard atmospheric pressure on the flask what you can do you can open the valve then the excess vapor is come outside and again you can close due to that way we can maintain the standard atmospheric pressure or normal the standard atmospheric pressure okay that's why we can easily find out okay the boiling point of water is 100 degrees celsius so in the boiling to find the boiling point of water experimentally i says that okay or you are observing that up to certain time we continuously supply the heat energy but uh, there is no rise or change in the thermometer reading it is nothing but temperature reading but uh, okay what about the or where has go the supplying of heat energy up to that particular time to understanding that concept okay the scientists are introduced the another okay concept that is latent heat of vaporization latent heat of vaporization already in the previous video i clearly explained about the latent heat and the latent heat of melting also okay now let me come to that what is the latent heat of vaporization the amount of heat energy required the amount of heat energy required to convert a liquid phase of substance the amount of heat energy required to convert a liquid phase of substance into vapor or gases phase without any change or rise in temperature
So in the definition, it is very clear. The amount of heat energy required to convert a liquid phase of substance into vapor phase means liquid phase of substance is converted into the vapor phase without any change or rise in temperature. It's nothing but without changing the temperature. Okay, the liquid state of the substance is completely converted into the vapor phase. That okay at that time. The substance will be absorbed. Listen very carefully. Okay, without changing the temperature, a liquid phase of substance is completely converted into the vapor phase substance. During that situation, it absorbs how much heat energy that is called latent heat of which one vaporization. We know the formula of latent heat of latent heat that is L is equals to Q by M. Here L is the latent heat. Okay, Q is the absorbed or liberated heat energy. M is the the given mass of the substance. That is the way of that one. This is the formula to find the latent heat. Okay, but now our concept is what is that one? Latent heat of vaporization. Okay. So experimentally, with the help of the Kelvin meter experiment, okay, the scientists are find out that the latent heat of vaporization value is means one gram of water at hundred degrees Celsius converts into one gram of Water vapor or steam at 100 degree Celsius. So process is you know that okay. Latent heat of vaporization means without changing temperature, a liquid phase substance is converted to the gaseous phase. Water is in which state phase? Liquid phase. Water vapor is in which phase? Gaseous phase. That's why here 100 degrees. Here 100 degrees means temperature is constant. That's why without change in temperature, okay, liquid phase is completely converted to the gaseous phase. At that time, the substance will be absorbed. How much heat energy? That is called latent heat of vaporization. Here, one gram of water at 100 degrees Celsius is completely converted into one gram of water vapor at 100 degrees Celsius. In that time, okay, this. One gram of water is absorbed. How much heat energy? So nearly okay, 540 calories. Okay, listen very carefully. Per gram. Now, what is the latent heat of vaporization value? So nearly 540 calories per gram means per one gram of water at 100 degrees Celsius is completely converted into the okay one gram of water vapor or steam at the same temperature 540 calories of the heat energy will be absorbed by the only one gram of water okay that is equal to 540 into 4.2 joule per gram okay here so 540 into 4.2 we can do that one 5 to 0 8 so that's why 2268 joule per gram so listen very carefully here okay so one gram of water okay at 100 degrees Celsius is completely converts into the one gram of water vapor or steam at the 100 degrees Celsius how much energy will be absorbed in CGS unit 540 calories in SI unit 2268 joules of okay energy will be absorbed by only one gram of water to convert okay from liquid phase to gases phase at 100 degrees Celsius but okay 
This total entitled the 2268 joules of heat energy. Okay, how it will be worked that means in the concept of latent heat of melting, I says that actually in the solid substances, the intermolecular covalent bonds are very strong, but in the liquids, okay, it is moderate, in the gases, it is the very weak. That's why to overcome, to Okay, break up simply to break up the intermolecular covalent bonds between the water molecules. Okay, to break up that bonds, okay, this excess heat energy will be utilized by the water molecules. Listen very carefully 2268 joules of heat energy will be absorbed by only one gram of water at 100 degrees Celsius in the liquid state, is com converted into the vapor state. It absorbs this much of heat energy. This much of heat energy will be utilized for what purpose? To break up the intermolecular covalent bonds in the water molecules. Due to that, that water molecules covalent bonds are decreases or break up. Then what will be happen? If the bonds will be break up, the weak they have the weak attraction force is nothing but the water phase is converted to the which phase? Vapor phase. Because of in the vapor phase, the both intermolecular covalent bonds are very 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 weak but moderate in the liquids that's why when you can break up the intermolecular covalent bonds in the water molecules at that time only the water is converted into the next phase that is the vapor phase that's why this 2268 joules of heat energy will be useful in case of one gram of water Okay, to break up the intermolecular covalent bonds, then finally convert into the vapor phase. But okay, in the total 2268, okay, so nearly 2060 joules, okay, nearly 2060 joules of heat energy will be utilized, okay, to increase the potential energy between the molecules. Increase the potential energy is nothing but the intermolecular species increases. If intermolecular species increases means okay, liquid is converted to the vapor because of we know that the intermolecular species is very high in case of gases low in the which one liquids and very very less or nearly zero in the solids. That's why to increase the intermolecular space is indirectly to increase the potential energy. Nearly 2060 joules of Okay, heat energy will be required to increase the potential energy is nothing but okay, simply indirectly to change it into the gases state and the remaining part of the energy will be utilized to increase the kinetic energy of the molecules in case of only one gram. Now, here, okay, some numericals are asking based on this concept about by mixing of latent heat of melting, latent heat of vaporization. Based on that one, I will explain one numerical. We are understanding very clearly. Listen very clearly. How much heat energy required? Listen very carefully. How much heat energy required to convert one gram of ice? at 0 degree Celsius into 1 gram of water vapor is nothing but steam at 100 degree Celsius. This type of numericals they are asking during the examination, listen very carefully. How much heat energy required to convert one gram of ice at zero degrees Celsius into one gram of water vapor at hundred degrees Celsius? 
Here, listen very carefully. One gram of ice at its temperature zero degrees Celsius. We know that one ice is directly not converted to the water vapor at hundred degrees Celsius because of we know the process. What is that one? Most of the substances in the change of state, first solid state, is converted into the liquid, liquid to gas. Here, which state is that given? Ice is in solid. Water vapor is in vacant gas state. That's why solid is directly not converted to the vapor phase in case of water. It is possible in the certain materials iodine. We know that camphor, naphthalene. That is the sublimation. But in case of water, we know that ice means solid state of the water in the form of ice. First converted to the liquid is nothing but water. Next, finally, water vapor. But here, ice is in solid state. Water vapor is in gas state. That's why directly ice is not converted to the vapor state. It must be passing the liquid state. That is, you can keep in your mind during solving these numericals. Now, let me come. How we can solve means first thing, which value we are given one gram of ice at zero degree Celsius. We know that one gram of ice at zero degree Celsius. For this one, we supply the heat energy. What will be happen? This ice is converted into the one gram of water. Is it correct or not? At which temperature? At zero degree Celsius. This is very One gram of ice initially we can take it in a bowl or beaker that is heated. At the okay, this ice is first converted into the which one? Water at the same temperature. It is called which process? Melting. That is you know the very clearly. After this one. Okay, next it is going to next case. What is that one? One gram of okay water at zero degree Celsius. After which ice is completely converted into the water at the same temperature. If you can heat the water continuously, the temperature is gradually increases up to 100. That's why one gram of water at which temperature? 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, listen. Ice is first converted to the water at the same temperature. It is called melting. Okay, after it reaches to the entire the ice is converted to the water. Further you are heated, the temperature is gradually increasing from 0 to 100. Okay, so but here what they are given that 1 gram of water vapor at 100, not water, water vapor. That's why next further. Okay, one gram of water at 100 degrees Celsius convert into one gram of water vapor at which temperature? 100 degrees Celsius. This is the way of method. Okay, that's why one gram of ice at zero first convert into the one gram of water at zero. Next, zero to next which one? One gram of water at 100 degrees Celsius. Next, one gram of water at 100 to one gram of water vapor at 100 degrees Celsius water vapor. Now, this thing we can simply write okay, in one other mode. During solving this numeric, this type of numericals, simply we can write one gram of ice at zero degree Celsius is converted into one gram of water at zero degree Celsius. Okay. Next from here, after this one, continue. What is that one? One gram of water at 100 degree Celsius. Next, one gram of water vapor at 100 degree Celsius. Means, okay, what I will be writing the previously, that is you can write simply. Okay, after this one, it will become like this one. Okay. 1 gram of ice at 0 degree Celsius converts to 1 gram of water at 0 degree Celsius. It is called melting. After that, if you can heat up the water, the water temperature is reaches to up to 100 degree Celsius. After reaches the 100 degree Celsius, again it will be converted to the water vapor or steam. 
Okay. Now here, one gram of ice at zero degree Celsius is converted to the one gram of water at zero. Here, temperature zero, zero. Okay. Ice solid state, water liquid state. Without changing the temperature, solid phase is completely converted to the liquid phase. This is called okay. What is it called? Latent heat of okay melting. Latent heat of melting. This heat energy we are considered as a Q1 for understanding of it. Next, one gram of water at 100 at zero degree Celsius is converted into one gram of water at which temperature 100 degree Celsius. Here temperature is changes. If temperature is changes, it is not comes under the which one latent heat concept. That's why it is comes to the regular okay concept that is the amount of heat energy absorbed by the one gram of water to convert from zero degree Celsius to hundred degree Celsius. That is Q2 energy is absorbed to convert water at zero to water at hundred degree Celsius. Next. From here to here, water liquid phase, water vapor gases phase, temperature temperature constant. That's why it is what is that one latent heat of vaporization because of without changing the temperature. Okay, the liquid phase is completely changes into the gases phase. That is called okay latent heat of which one vaporization. This heat energy becomes as a Q3. Okay, let me come to that one. Q1, Q2, T3 concept is there. So, for the Q1, how to find the Q1 value first thing? Okay, for finding the Q1 value, we know the formula. Here, what is that one? Latent heat of melting. What is the formula of latent heat of melting? L is equal to Q by M. This is the formula. We know that very clearly. Here Q means what is that one? Q1 where I can say that L is the latent heat, Q is the amount of heat energy absorbed, M is the mass of the substance. That's why from this one we can find Q1, Q1 is equal to what you can write. Okay, M is the transfer to this side. L into M we can write is it. That's why Q1 is equals to what is the L latent heat of melting? What is the value? 80 calories. Okay, simply 80 calories into M is what is that one? 1 gram. Okay, that's why Q1 is equals to 80 calories. Means 80 calories of heat energy. Okay, will be absorbed by 1 gram of ice at 0 degree Celsius is converted to the water at 0 degree Celsius. That is the Q1. Okay, next one Q2. So, to find the Q2 here, it is not a, it is not belonging, okay, it is not comes under the latent heat of either melting or vaporization or any concept of latent heat. Which one here? Specific heat concept is there. Means the amount of heat energy absorbed by the body. Q is depend upon the factors. Based on that one, we know one formula. M S delta T. We know that very clearly. M is the mass of the substance. S is the specific heat. Delta T is the change in temperature. Here, temperature is change from 0 to 100. That's why we are using this formula by changing the temperature. Then, what is the M value? Mass 1 gram. Specific heat of water, we know that 1 calorie per gram in CGS unit. Delta T, change in temperature. It is the T1. It is the T1, it is the T2. T1 is 0, T2 is 100. T2 minus T1. 100 minus 0, what is that one? 100. That's why 100. Then, what is the value? 100 calories. Okay, means 100 calories of heat energy will be absorbed by 1 gram of water at 0 degree Celsius is com converted into the 1 gram of water at 100 degree Celsius. Now, let the third one. 1 gram of water at 100 degrees converted to 1 gram of water vapor. It is belonging to which one? Latent heat of vaporization. That's why latent heat of vaporization means formula same. L is equal to Q by M. Here in the place of Q, what you can write? Q3. That's why Q3 is equal to L into M. Then Q3 is equal to what is the latent heat of vaporization? 540. I say that nearly. That's why. 
540 calories into 1 that is equal to 540 calories of energy okay that's why so means okay so q1 is equal to 80 q2 is equal to 100 and q3 is equal to 540 but what we want one gram of ice at zero is converted to one gram of water vapor means from here to here means from this is the starting of the process it is the ending of the process from starting to ending of this process how much heat energy will be absorbed by the one gram of ice completely to convert into the one gram of water vapor means we can add in q1 q2 and q3 simply that's why here okay here only I wrote listen very carefully so q means the total energy is equal to q1 plus q2 plus q3 so q is represented the the total energy required from starting to ending of the process according to numerical what is the q1 value 80 plus 100 plus 540 so what is the total 540 100 next to 80 so 8 4 12 5 6 7 720 that's why total is 720 calories so what is the heat energy will be required 1 gram of ice at 0 degree celsius is converted into 1 gram of water vapor or steam at 100 degree celsius means 720 calories okay if certain Okay, examinations they are asking that the value we can find in the joules. Joules means 720 into what is that one? 4.2 joules. Then automatically we can find the value in the SI unit or in the joules. This is the way of method to solve this type of numericals based on the latent heat concept or one okay during this type of model of okay numericals or problems. Okay. So from that one, what we can understand means here, okay, 
so if the pressure is increases boiling point is also increases listen very carefully what is the effect of pressure on boiling or boiling point or boiling point that's why if the pressure is increases simply first thing p increases okay so boiling point is also increases boiling point of water is also increases listen very carefully if pressure is increases boiling point of water is also increases okay in the previous diagram we are observing that like this one just simply i will tell so in this one we are observing that here okay in the liquid regular conditions by opening or closing the valve we can maintain a standard atmospheric pressure inside that one that's why the boiling point of water is 100 degree celsius that is we can find but here okay now the valve cannot be open it is closed then what will be happen the water which is coming to the vapor state it is not okay comes outside that's why inside the bottom flask okay the pressure is increases when the pressure is increases at that time we are observing the reading in the thermometer okay so the entire the liquid before coming to the vapor state only so the temperature in the thermometer is it increases it is nearly comes to 120 degrees to 125 degree celsius okay so means what is the boiling point of water 100 degree celsius only at the normal or standard atmospheric temperature or present okay but when the pressure is increases how we can increasing the pressure here by closing the valve okay we cannot we cannot we cannot allow the escaping of steam to the outside from the flask then automatically the okay vapor is trapped inside the vessel when the vapor is okay keep trapped inside the vessel then what will be happen okay so this vapor present is added for the atmospheric present then finally the pressure is increases on the surface of the water inside the plastic due to that the boiling point is increases that is clearly we can see in this experiment that's why pressure is increases the boiling point of water is also increases next the same thing we can keep into the reverse mode inverted mode okay reverse mode means inverted mode after keep into the reverse mode okay now we can pour the cold water on the round bottom flask we are observing that okay so here this one after this one what will be comes to here here what vapor will be in the reverse mode okay in the reverse mode all the water will comes to downward in the upward we are observing that this water is coming to the vapor state but at that time in the thermometer the temperature will showing that 80 Degree Celsius to 85 degree Celsius means in this one also water is okay coming to the vapor phase or not so means you are observing that when the pressure is increases boiling point is also increases when the pressure is decreases how the pressure is decreases by pouring the cold water on it what will be happen some water vapor is absorb the heat energy and come to the water that's why automatically pressure is decreases by decreasing the pressure here okay at boiling point of water is also decreases that is 80 degree to 85 degree celsius that's why okay when we go to the higher altitude the okay air pressure is decreases is nothing but atmospheric pressure is decreases when the atmospheric pressure is decreases what will be decreases boiling point of water is also decreases that's why at the higher altitude mostly the mountain climbers are using or the people those are living at the higher altitude they must be use the pressure cookers because of okay if we cannot use the pressure cookers then what will be happen okay the boiling point of water is normally 100 degree celsius but now when we are going to certain higher altitudes what is the boiling point 80 to 85 that's why okay so if you can cook the any vegetables without any pressure cooker in the normal conditions what will be happen they took so much time why they took so much time for boiling purpose because of the boiling point of water is less that's why even it reaches sorry 
when the what is reaches to 80 to 85 degree Celsius, it convert to the vapor state. That's why sufficient energy will not import to the okay cooking vegetables or cooking materials. That's why it takes so much time for boil. Okay, to boil. That's why okay in the higher altitudes the people those are living they use the pressure cooker. That's why the pressure cooker is working on the principle of okay pressure is increases boiling point is also increases. It is based on that principle the pressure cooker is working. You know that in the pressure cooker okay the after keeping closing the okay upper lid we can close with the gasket. Okay, means when the bulb is there. That's why what will be happen if we can heat it, the water will be converted to the boil. Okay, means water is coming to the vapor state, but the vapor is cannot be escaped because of the okay open vessel is closed with the rubber gasket is there. That's why it will not come outside easily. Due to that, what will be happen inside the pressure cooker? The air pressure is means what will be converted to the water vapor. Okay, that pressure and atmosphere pressure both are added. That's why means simply I say that in a pressure cooker the vapor means the pressure is trapped means what vapor is trapped inside the vessel that's why pressure is increases when the pressure is increases what is increases boiling point is also increases that's why the boiling point of water is increases in the pressure cooker nearly 120 to 125 degrees Celsius due to that the that's why okay the vegetables are the food materials which are used in the pressure cooker they will be quickly boiled because of more amount of heat energy is imported okay to the okay food materials from the water due to higher boiling point okay that's why so what is the main reason why the pressure cooker is used means so in a pressure cooker okay so the Water vapor pressure is trapped inside the pressure cooker due to that one. Okay, the atmospheric pressure and water pressure both are added. Then finally, the pressure is increases on the water surface inside the pressure cooker. Then the pressure is increases. Boiling point of water is also increases. Okay, in the pressure cooker, the boiling point of water is increases nearly 120 to 125 degrees Celsius. That's why so much okay heat energy will be imported to the which one. Okay, cooking materials in the pressure cooker. That's why they quickly boiled. That is the main reason. Okay, why we are using the pressure cooker. So next one is what is the differences between evaporation and boiling? It is very very important for four marks or two marks. Okay, in this chapter. So simply, I will be tell five okay differences between evaporation and boiling. They are very easy to you for remembering. Okay. So first one is you can write the definition. Okay. The process of surface of molecules converts into the vapor phase is called evaporation. Boiling. Okay. The process of liquid phase changes into the gaseous phase is called boiling next second one evaporation is a surface phenomenon under the boiling it is a bulk phenomenon bulk means total large because of not only the surface and then the liquid means it will be take so much time that's why it is a bulk process or bulk phenomenon third one is there okay Evaporation is occurs at any temperature below the boiling point. Under the boiling, boiling is occurs only at a particular temperature. Next fourth one. Only surface of the liquid only evaporated. Here, entire the liquid will be converted to the vapor phase. Reason only surface of the liquid only convert to the vapor phase here entire the liquid will be convert to the vapor phase next fifth one evaporation is depend on the surface area humidity temperature and wind speed or wind velocity boiling is depend on the 
atmospheric pressure and supplied heat energy so listen very carefully once again okay first one is we can write the definition on both side the process of escaping of water molecules from the surface of a liquid is called evaporation under the boiling the process of a liquid phase is changes into the gaseous phase is called boiling evaporation is a surface phenomenon boiling is a bulk phenomenon only surface of the liquid only converted entire the liquid is converted to the vapor phase evaporation is occurs okay at any temperature below the boiling point boiling is occurs at a particular temperature only evaporation is depend on the surface area humidity wind speed and okay temperature wind speed surface area humidity wind speed and temperature boiling is depend upon the atmospheric pressure and supplied heat energy thank you